people, in case you wonder what I am doing here, I will accept the fact that I am Mark's mother. And I still think that even though he can do this and do it very adequately, when it comes to handling dough, I think it more or less is a woman thing. We're going to make sourdough biscuits, the kind that cowboys absolutely thrived on. And the reason that they like them so well is that a sourdough biscuit is not as, what would you say, tender and flaky and... It's more like a bread than it's a... It's more like bread than it, than, and I think they were more forgiving because if you had just an absolutely horrible cook, he could be sourdough biscuits and if he burned the bottom you could peel that off and throw it if he burned the top you could peel that off and throw it if it was doughy in the middle you'd lost the whole thing they say that there are solidified fossil biscuits laying all over the west from chuck wagon cooks who made such horrible ones but mark and i what did you figure out that the average cowboy probably ate eight, ten. Eight, ten, to ten. eight to ten biscuits with his beef and his beans every meal. The thing to remember is that if you make sourdough biscuits, you need a sourdough starter. And that's something that if you were interested in doing it, I would suggest that you did it in the winter time because it's a it's a pokey thing and you have to keep it warm and you have to feed it. But for making the, open that, will you, Mark? I certainly will. Uh, op, uh, making sourdough biscuits, you use equal proportions of the sourdough itself, which is nothing more than a fermented, yeasty flour and water concoction. Equal portions of water and flour, a pinch of sugar, a tablespoon of yeast to start it with, and you put it in a great big crock, and it has a life all its own. It will rise. Literally, it will... it's like a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you go out there on a morning and you see that it has gone over the crock, then you realize that you should have stirred it or used some of it or thrown some of it out. In this bowl, there's a tablespoon of baking powder, which gives it a little life, uh, about a teaspoon of sugar, a little salt, and we are pouring in two cups of sour dough starter. And then you start adding flour. Then you'll find the starter is about the consistency of a milk gravy. All right, this will give us two cups, Mark, and we can and while you're doing that, I'm going to get the Dutch oven ready for this. All right, so. do that, would you please? Now this is flour. This is why I say it, it sort of has to be a woman thing. You will notice that the, the dough actually becomes frothy as you stir it up. And it will get more firm so you have some hope of uh, being able to handle it. The original chuck wagon cooks used to not used to not use a bowl they would make a great big cavity in their sack of flour and then they would just pour in about two quarts of sourdough and they would work it i usually try to work it right in the bowl because it's just that much less trouble trying to clean it up now in this pan here, we have some cooking oil, quite a generous amount. There was no shortening in this dough at all. So the thing that you're going to do, come on, why don't you get in here and help me with this. You make your biscuits about the size of a golf ball. And then they have to double. It's kind of like Play-Doh. Well, just about. I think that, that of all of the uh, material you read, cowboys were more particular 
about the cook being able to make sourdough biscuits. And when you read that their menu was frequently for weeks on end, beans and, and beef. You want these covered with oil real well, too. So. so they don't stick. Yeah. And they get the crust gets their tenderness from that. And you want to nest them together nice and... You want one more in there? Yep, let's do it. Yeah. Tight, Sourdough that helps them to rise. If, if, they're that, if they're that close, the only way they can go is up. And the higher they go up, the more tender and the lighter they are going to be. Okay, your turn. There you go. Should be able to get about... Uh, Oh, maybe 15 or 20 in a little pan. One more, one more in here. One more. I think that's it. Now, these are going to have to proof. You tell them what proofing is, and I'll get rid of this mess here. It's ugly. Proofing is just simply letting your dough sit in some heat. It's going to get the yeast and everything active again. They're actually going to grow in the pan, so we're going to move them over to the warming shelf on the fire pit here, cover them up, we're going to let them sit and proof. We'll show you what they look like after they've risen. Okay, at this point, our biscuits have proofed for a while, and you can see that they've just about doubled in size. This is the way you want your pan to look, and we're going to be uh, placing these in our Dutch oven right now. Just lift the lid. And carefully, because these, of course, is a hot oven. Slide those in there. And as I showed you before, at this point, we'd be placing the coals on top and underneath the oven.